What's going on button pushers? Welcome to the channel. My name is David. So some of you might know how fast I actually deliver my music videos to my clients and it's usually same or next day. So in today's video, I want to give you guys a few tips of some things and just run down a little bit of my editing process in a quick little video for you guys to kind of see if I could help you speed up your process of editing videos. guys are new to the channel make sure you guys hit that subscribe button you won't regret it drop me a comment below let me know how you guys edit your videos and what your process is but let's just jump straight into the video guys so the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually put all my performance clips on the timeline now I'm gonna stack them on top of each other but as I go I'm actually gonna label the performance clips just so I know exactly where the specific performance scene is taking place. That way I can make sure that all of the ones in the same exact setting kind of have the same color grade and whatnot. So I'm gonna label them as I go. So I'm gonna stack all of them in the same place, highlight all of them and then label them by right clicking, label and choosing a color. Now that I have all the performance scenes, which should be all the scenes where the artist is actually performing this song, I'm gonna highlight all of them and hit right click, synchronize. Now this is an amazing tool that will help you sync all of the audio together with the song and it is pretty freaking amazing. So I forgot to mention this in the recording but what I'm doing here is highlighting all of the clips, unlinking the video and the audio and then deleting the audio. So this is actually going to give you a lot cleaner timeline and make it a lot easier for you to not get lost in all of the layers. So anyways, after I finally synchronize the clips and then line it up and clean it up a little bit, so pretty much drag it to the beginning of the song and then, you know, close out any gaps, then I start coloring. Now there is a ton of ways to color video and everybody has their own thing. Some people bring it to a different program like DaVinci, which is definitely superior. I envy you guys, but I don't know, I, I just haven't gotten into it. Some people use adjustment layers, some people color on top of the clip on the timeline, but some people, like me, use the source to color. Now for those of you who don't know what source is, it's pretty much the overall actual clip itself. So when you put a clip on the timeline, it's think of it like a copy of the actual clip itself. So any effects that you throw on the timeline clip is just that timeline clip. So if I were to use clip one twice in the video and I put it at like the beginning of the video and one at the end of the video, and I applied like a color grade to the timeline at the beginning and the clip one, it wouldn't be applied to the other one at the end. But if you colored it and applied it to the source of the clip, it would be applied to both. So you don't have to copy and paste or anything, just apply it to the source. Now to access source, you can either double click on the clip in the timeline in your project bin, or just click on it, go to the effects, and on the left of the effects tab, you'll see something on that says source next to the actual clip name itself. That is going to be where you can apply your source effects. Now we've all had our fair share of moments where if you're applying Lumetri color to the timeline itself on the clip on the timeline and the artist asks for revisions and you need to change the color you don't want to have to go through your entire timeline and find specific parts where you need to change the color this is where source really really helps out because you don't need to find all of them you just need to find one of them and on top of that that's where labeling comes in once you've labeled all your performance clips and you're starting to color you can actually just copy and paste all of them on the source clips of the labeled ones that share the same settings and this will speed up the process a ton but the beauty of source is not only do you just paste it on the clips themselves on the timeline or double clicking on each of them if you just select it in the bin and you press command or control v to paste the effects on it actually applies it to the source itself that way as you're coloring if you have any b-roll from that same setting you can actually paste the effects on those clips in your bin and this will speed the process up a ton and you can always go back and make those minor adjustments because yes lighting situations might change and all that but it makes it a ton easier and a lot faster than having to go through each individual clip and figuring it all out so you can always do it ahead of time color and then next we're gonna go into actually making that rough cut we gotta make the performance we gotta make the music video so pretty much what I do is now I set every layer invisible except for one and I go through each and every performance scene I cut out my favorite parts and I drag it to the top layer above all the performance scenes 
and that is where I start making my music video. So after a while, you just keep doing this. Once you have your first rough cut, send that to the artist. My favorite website to use is Streamable because artists cannot download it. They cannot trick you. They cannot scheme you unless they do a phone screen recording and that's not the best quality. But I will link that for you guys below. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. They're just a super awesome website. So make sure you use that because it will save you. Anyways, on top of that, now that you have everything lined up and laid out, you don't necessarily need to keep finding things if you have revisions. So the artist may say, hey, remove this clip at 56 seconds. Can you change that? And you just change that performance scene from something below that. And after you've laid out all your performance scenes, you can always go back, fill in the gaps where you couldn't find a good performance scene with some B-roll or just throw some B-roll in some places where performance scenes weren't as strong. And it's just a really easy process where you kind of just like keep layering on top of it and you work for it from it and everything you need is right below it and you don't need to like go back and figure things out and resync things. It just makes it a lot easier and I for one am not one to use heavy effects but if you guys are those looking to do a lot of heavy effects this still also makes it a lot easier for you because now that you have everything laid out after you've done all the rough cut after you've done all the b-roll you can go back throw in those effects and have it a little bit more organized and just kind of you know be able to make it easier for you in case there's any revisions I hope you can take something away from this video with you to kind of speed up that editing process because I do notice that a lot of people tend to just like kind of go through, kind of just like look like, oh, this one looks good. Let me just put this here. This one looks good. Let me put this here rather than, you know, actually layering and finding out what might look good or make it easier for themselves when they come back to revisions and whatnot. It's a lot easier process in my opinion. And afterwards, after you're done, it's just super simple and you won't have to go through the struggle but make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and let me know in the comments below what is your editing process like anyways keep pushing buttons guys and i'll see you in the next video peace